Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all ages, welcome to Tyler Bryant Hour, episode 30. I do apologize if this episode sounds kind of bad or not that great. Um, on the good news, we was able to use both microphones for the first time, uh, and it should sound like we're using own separate microphones. But on the bad news, I had to go back to the original programming in GarageBand, and I don't know how to tweak that and make that sound better. So I really don't know how the background noise will sound. I don't know how this will sound in your cars and your headsets. So I do apologize. We do have a goal of uh, pretty much a thousand dollars to get into all road gear. So if road even wants to sponsor us, get at us, you know what I'm saying? At us on Twitter, or Instagram, whatever. I might add you guys at this website episode. But uh, yeah, that's basically what we're going to do. I think it's called the Road Podcast there uh, Mixer. And it has Bluetooth. It has a way to connect it. And that's just going to be dope because we can do call-in. So we can be able to call Brent when he's not here and things of that nature. But um, that's pretty much it that I had to say. Tyler, you want to speak to the people? How's it going, people? My name is Tyler the Libra, a.k.a. TTL, a.k.a. just Tyler for short. And um, Dirty 30, yeah. Was, I can't believe we made it this far, actually. I I just love the fact that we've been this consistent. I don't think we've missed a week yet. I don't know we think, haven't, honestly. I don't know how many weeks it's been, but we haven't missed a week yet. Um, the beauty of this podcast is that it's been doing really well. I've been slacking on the YouTube end because it's just harder to edit YouTube videos and make it appealing. I, I want to learn After Effects so I can at least make it aesthetically pleasing if you're going to watch the YouTube version. But the YouTube version, I want to say, had probably... It's been like four or five episodes. I think the last episode I didn't upload was Anna's episode, but... Ever since then, I want to say those first few that we uploaded had about 50, 50 views on YouTube. And okay. I know SoundCloud, ever since we've been uploading uh, all the episodes, SoundCloud has over 200 plays. So that's pretty dope. We thank you for the love, and by then, the way. And uh, Spotify has over 100 plays. So, yeah, the numbers are going good. The numbers are going great. Um and the first thing I want to do on the podcast episode is I kind of want to freestyle, not literal sense of like me actually rapping because I'm not a rapper or anything like that. But uh, the way that 2020 ended was the worst fucking way that it could possibly end for me. Uh, Damn, really? I, I really. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. I never really put this into words and I never really said it out loud. But uh, for those of you who don't know, my grandpa had passed on Sunday. Uh, so it'll be literally a week from today. Um, when this episode comes out, obviously, but it it just hurts because it, like I, I feel a wide range of emotions. Like I'm still back to my normal self. I'm still goofy and energetic, but I just feel like there's a hole in my heart. I feel like there's something missing. Uh, the worst part about him dying is like it's just that realization that he's he's gone. Like he's never coming back. Like I can't talk to him about old school Cadillacs and show him if I ever were to get one that he'll like. Uh, I can't, I, I can't, you know, eat his cooking. How he always had like a Sunday get together where he would always cook ribs and steaks and just stuff for the family and just, just to be around the family. I can't like hear his voice and just hug him and tell him I love him. Luckily, I was blessed enough to where I did see him on Christmas and I was able to talk to him and say I love him. And that was like the last thing I ever said to him. And like that vividly plays in my mind like at least once a day. Um, we don't know how he passed. He could potentially have passed, had a stroke because of his hands and how his position could have been COVID. It could have been... Uh, could have been anything really he, he did have some health problems he did have like open heart surgery i think he did have cancer he he was a soldier he was a hard-working blue-collar man uh due to some fortunate circumstances and some choices in his life he was still working but another thing that just hurts and like it really hurts like i i am honestly fucked up right now but it hurts because he was four days away from retiring like i want to say yesterday Either yesterday or the day before yesterday, when he was supposed to retire. So I was just like, damn, they, like really? Four days before you retire, you pass? And that shit just hurts, man. I, I, I can't relate anything to, you know, your, your dad and that passing because you saw him every day. But like, 
I, I try to visit my grandparents at least once a week pre-COVID and just talk to them and just tell them I love them. Unfortunately, I would see my grandma a bit more than my grandpa just because he would work that blue collar nine to five, nine to six, get off at late. So if I was there super late, I would speak to them and say hello. And another thing that just kind of really like rubbed me the wrong way and me just looking back on the relationship is like we were close but we didn't have a lot to talk about like my grandpa was more of an outdoorsman and was into cars and things of that nature and it's not that I don't like that but it's just like I can't really hold my conversations with that so like we would talk but it would always be like brief kind of and things of that nature and then it's just like just how how he was as a person and who he was and with my grandpa, I, I was the first, so I was uh, his his number one. He would always tell his neighbors and stuff like that. So when I come over and see him, they would be like, "Yo, that's the number one grandson." And it's like, "Yeah, he got me feeling good before I'm even in the house." And then he would take care of me. He would like, I guess this is like when I was little, like two or three, he would cook me steaks, all types of shit. Like, I guess he was just really proud to, to be a grandpa and to be my grandfather. And I, I love and I miss him. And Honestly, I think the hardest part, too, like, so I, obviously I've been, like, having this array of emotions and thinking about it, and like I said, I told Tyler before the podcast, I just want to freestyle and just pay my dues to my grandpa, because this is the only way I can express myself, really. The, the hardest part is, is uh, how I found out, and I, I get why, like, my mom's philosophy and why she did what she did. But it's the same way I found out about my cousin Jazz, and it, it, it sucks. Like, I, I was over here thinking about some bullshit that happened at work, and, um, like, you know what I mean? I was thinking some bullshit, and I was annoyed, and I was mad, and then I wanted to be petty, so then I started getting in a good mood and putting myself in a good mood and just acting out and just, you know, being an asshole. And,. Sure enough, my mom tells me the terrible news, and it's just like I I want to know what like my family knows, so I could go there and be with my family. You know what I mean? Like I, I kind of hate finding out so late that I I can't give a, a genuine reaction because like I almost felt fake because I feel like the four people I would cry for in my lifetime outside of friends, of course, is is my parents, and my grandparents, and I just couldn't cry on, on Sunday, and that shit really fucked with me, and. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know what I'm saying? My grandpa was hardworking. I'm getting choked up now. But my grandpa was hardworking, blue collar, and I just loved everything he did and everything he was about. Uh, I just, I wish him nothing but respect. Hopefully he's not in pain anymore or anything like that. Um, he did look healthy. He didn't look the healthiest, but he did look pretty good the last time I saw him. Um, so I'm hoping he's looking down on me proud. And I, I, I hope that realistically, if I'm being honest, I'm probably going to, <laughs> in an unhealthy way, work as hard as I possibly can, where before, like, it's either you work, you overwork yourself and, like, you stress yourself out when you're going through something and you're sad and depressed, or you drink, and I really, really don't want to become that just because I've seen what it's done to other people and I've seen the other people it's done in their life, so... Um, I know it's not the healthiest thing in the world. I know it's not the greatest thing to say, probably for the therapists, mental health people out there, but it is what it is. I, I want to work myself through it so I don't end up drinking. But, uh, yeah. I, was, I have a therapist. I'm still drinking. Yeah, that's another reason why I don't want to do that. <laughs> but uh, in love and Mary, this episode is definitely dedicated to in love and marry me of Charles Heard. Uh, I love you, Grandpa. Uh, like I said, hope you just, hopefully you're looking down proud at me. But to get all that out of the way, Tyler, sorry for freestyling. <laughs> yeah, it's fine, minutes, man. You had to get that off your chest. I understand. I had, I, to, I, mean, I had to go. But what are some goals for the podcast in 2021? Is there, is there anything you want to happen or anything you're wishing for? Speaking into existence now. I know we already kind of touched on it briefly in the previous episodes. I would episodes. like for us to be just household listeners. Yeah. Honestly, that would be the best thing. Like, somebody just walk up to your friends and be like, hey, man, you know, I caught last night's podcast, bro. That shit was dope, bro. Like, y'all y'all mad funny. And yeah, I stuff mean. Stuff like that. And, like, that, that just puts 
in a time where you know things are as challenging as they are you know it's always good to have you know people around you that support you and it's also good to have a good to you know have a good laugh every once in a while you know and I feel like we do that on a weekly basis you know hopefully um, I hope that comes off I hope it comes off as like like the whole aesthetic because it's like you need a why for a podcast and I, I hope it comes off that like we are two best friends that are talking and conversating and like just talking about everything in life and like stuff we're going on because I feel like I don't want to call us average Joes but people are probably going through some of the same shit we are you know oh yeah yeah most definitely I mean it's just one of those things where as we get older we attend to kind of cater to everybody else as far as you know what their life is going on right now you know what they're thinking about and uh what they probably feel like saying but they don't actually say Mm -hmm. and you know we just try to lighten the mood as best as we can every single week damn it and just to experience like because it's like a lot of people like you figure there's a bunch of 20 year olds and 30 year olds that are going through the same shit that like we are and we're just expressing it and just like and let me get we don't have all the answers like don't don't be mm. listening to us like like we the therapist man but, you I mean, probably be fucked up if you listen to right? us <laughs> but um yeah we we're absolutely we're we're just going through life as you guys are I mean fuck we learn we live and we try the best we can every single day I mean to be frank and to be toxic uh, a goal I have for the podcast is I want this shit to have 20,000 followers by the end of the year okay. I think it is possible I think how I market it and how I promote the podcast I have to do a better job because obviously I'm on the technical side Tyler's is pretty much the voice <laughs> the voice of reasoning on the podcast uh, and, and he provides a place let me give him his credit where his credit's due um, but you figure I, I got like I say about 800 followers on Instagram. You would say you probably have like, what, 700, 800, maybe more? Yeah, 700 probably. Yeah, so 1,500 right there. That's, you know what I'm saying? That's 1,000. There's no reason we can't have 1,000 people uh, on the on the podcast uh, podcast followers. And that's just Instagram alone. You probably got a few hundred or so on Twitter. I know I got like 1,500 on Twitter. You got 1,500 followers on Twitter? Oh, well, maybe not, okay, maybe not 1,500, but I know I got 1,000. I got 1,000 some change. Yeah, bro, FGC is so there. low. I ain't even got a thousand, okay? FG, FGC is so low. Shout out to the FGC. But um, basically, I'm saying, like, if we have a thousand in here and there, we could grow the podcast because we only have, like, 30 or so on SoundCloud, and then we only have, like, 10 on Spotify. I don't know about Apple Music. That's the only thing I hate about Apple. Weird. It, it don't tell you no information so I don't know who I gotta talk to or who I gotta beat up to get the information <laughs> you gotta shake them <laughs> yeah but I mean I know and then like I said all those numbers don't add up to 20,000 but I truly feel like if we if we can stay consistently doing this podcast and we make it entertaining and people enjoy it I, I think 20,000 is a reachable number I, I do and now is there a number that you would want for place cause usually we get like just this last month, we had like 300 if we combine the two platforms, and we don't even know about, uh, and we don't even know technically about Apple. So, yeah, it's kind of hard to tell with that situation. But um, I am looking to, as far as guests, I'm looking to probably average probably like at least 10 guests a month. That'd be nice. I don't even know if we. I don't even know if I know that many people <laughs> to be averaging that much. But we'd have to shoot almost. I, we'd almost have to shoot like three a week to hit ten. But I was talking more so like numbers as far as like listens and plays on the podcast. Um, like how much would you want if if I want twenty thousand followers? How many plays would you want? That would average out really well too if we had twenty thousand followers. But I figure that's a good number. Then. I mean, like, because I, I, I can't, like, maybe if, if the audio quality is some ass, is some caca, is some dookie, is some trash, like, I, I, I'll give it up. If that's the reason we don't have the many followers that we have, I, I give it up because, nigga, this shit hard. I'm trying to learn. 
then I have to buy that thing from Walmart that I keep forgetting to buy so we could use it so this sound sounds better and not an echo since there's nothing there's not a lot of stuff in this room but if that's the reason the podcast is failing then I I, I understand but there's no reason that this podcast can't get 100 plays like the first day there's no reason it can't I truly believe that Maybe I'm talking out my ass, and I, I truly believe that. Hopefully, Tyler believes that. Hopefully, you guys who are listening to this point, 15 minutes in, believe that. But yeah, um, and then and another goal in the podcast is there's a bunch of guests that I want to get to. I feel like there's a lot of people, especially in the city at the moment. Like there's there's a lot of talent out there. Um, is there anyone specifically you want to for sure get or uh, anything like that? Well, whenever fucking Brent decides to come back, and <laughs> well, that's why so. I'm tired. Of, I'm tired of him ducking and dodging Iowa. But um, yeah, he um. Shit, if we ever get that mixer, that you just called on <laughs> yeah. the episode. Uh, the mixer is about six hundred dollars too. So if anyone wanna give me, they stand me. Cash you feel out. me? You feel me? Yeah, you give me that stimulus check. Uh, I would gladly take that for the podcast. Uh, yeah, any other goals? Any other goals for you as the podcaster? Maybe for you to talk more. Maybe for you. For, I would love to see you lead an episode organically. I think that would be kind of cool. Because I've led one. You led. I feel like you led a few. There was another one you led. Or at least you started. I do remember that. But then, yo, as the only thing, the only issue you have as far as a lead and a host is like you don't organically, you'll just keep talking to the nigga and then stop. And then look at me, I'm like, nigga, uh, next topic. But yeah, I feel that. And then, yeah, not talking like that. But, and then me being inebriated. Mm-hmm. I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> By the way, this is the last podcast that I'll come on here com- um, completely not plastered. He said it, so hold him accountable, please. <laughs> hold me accountable because I need to do something with all this alcohol. Like, <laughs> this a lot, bro. Uh, You're literally my, playing a ring of fire with this shit. Right? By the way, by the way, uh, Bar Tyler is open for business. If anybody needs any type of drink or whatever, come see me, <laughs> DM me, because I got pretty much damn near everything that is to you know your liking and ex- disposal um let's see i'm running low on the jack i got i will not carry hennessy in this house so don't come to me for hennessy i mean uh, i can break the hennessy there. um yeah that's on you it'll be thrown out but um what? let's so, see what the hell is hennessy? <laughs> let's see i got all the rock star drinks i got the jack daniels the jim bean actually i just finished the jim bean <laughs> If you got my bulletin last night, if anybody got my Snapchat last night, I am officially out of Jim Beam. So if anybody wants to accommodate me on that, I will highly appreciate that. And I will shout you out on the next podcast. But um, I got the Jose Cuero. Nigga, didn't you just say you're done being plastered on the podcast? So you just go yeah. have someone supply the alcohol for Doesn't mean I have to drink. I said I was done. Anybody mm-hmm. else want to be done? I don't hear anybody else being done around here. So So you just have them bring the you alcohol. <laughs> if you bring me alcohol, if you hand deliver it to me, I guarantee you will be on, on a guest on the next podcast. That's an automatic win win for both of us. <laughs> uh, actually, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You might get Debo checked at the door. Hold on. <laughs> it depends on who you is. Hold on. Don't, don't let Tyler cast you a check that you're gonna get. <laughs> I will not show up to this motherfucker. But uh, that is funny. Well, speaking of alcohol and bringing alcohol and things of that nature, how was your New Year's? What did you end up doing? I barely remembered it. Okay, well, from what you remember, see oh. this nigga here, yeah, bro. And y'all see why I said I'm going to work myself to death. I'd rather work myself to death than be an alcoholic. But from what I do remember, this it was already iffy. Like, um, where are you usually at during like the countdown? Are you in a stationary place? Um, like in an actual like place. Cause this was the first year that I was not in the actual place. I was riding around with these niggas, Cesar. Shout out to Cesar, shout out to Saul, shout out to Caleb. I was riding around with these niggas in a car, just 
we're driving around downtown when the countdown happened. So I was like, bro, this year is already kind of going off. Like, why am I? Like, how am I here? Like, how did I get in this situation? I, uh, I was last year. I was in a small bar across the street from my job, and then this year. I ended up working and I was in my car. And it was just, yeah, it was already like, because it obviously, like, we're, for those of you who do not know, we are currently in the Midwest. So we, um, sorry if you hear that, my, sorry. But yeah, I was, sorry about that. I had to unlock the, <laughs> it was space and all. No, I had to unlock the uh, computer because I wanted to make sure it was still recording. Like, so I could see it. Um, I was in the car, and then, yeah, like, so we're in the Midwest, so it's, uh, like, we're an hour behind East Coast time, so technically East Coast is, like, when the ball drops and stuff like that, so it was, like, 10.45, 10.50 when I got out of work, and I'm just, like, yeah, I'm just gonna wait here, dog, because <laughs> the ball have already been dropped, Happy New Year's, and I was, like, all my friends in the group chat that I have on Twitter, I have a few, uh, I think all four of them. Yeah, all four of them on the East Coast, but I'm the only like Midwest nigga. So like, I was like, nah, I'm gonna wait till 12 of my time to say Happy New Year because it's technically not New Year yet. And they're all like, Happy New Year. And I just like that was the first thing I saw that I got out of, out of my job. So I was just like, yeah, yeah. I didn't do much, and I just I kind of just went to bed. It was kind of boring. It's also a pandemic, so it's like I I don't really want to risk. The most it. weirdest fucking New Year's that I've had to date in my life. I don't just say it like that because this is also the first New Year's that like like I don't have a significant other you know mm. in like a couple of years so like it was kind of like it's kind of already like odd to me so then what was the last New Year's we celebrated do you remember wasn't we at Anna's house like 2018 didn't you go to that I don't think so oh I don't remember being at oh. her house you must not have been invited yeah, that's usually how it goes. I think you said, damn, you weren't there? <laughs> nah. I you were there. I could have sworn you were there. I was probably drunk as hell anyway, so I mean, everybody looks like everybody. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, I mean, it was kind of, I was kind of like, like? like a weird mindset anyway. I think I was just at the crib, to be honest with you. Yeah, you always at the crib. That's why I beat. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing to do. Like, weren't we in the pandemic? And then, like, my thing is, I, I like the spots where I can drive and go home. And it's not, I'm not trying to promote drink driving and all that bullshit, but it's just like, if I can't go back to the crib, like, why am I? Because <laughs> I, like, niggas, niggas love, especially this nigga Tyler. And the yeah, gang, go. niggas be loving, like, shit close at two, niggas be posted at 205, just chilling outside. I'm like, yo, what we doing? It's cold. I'm starting to sober up. What we doing? <laughs> we just not doing anything right now. So let's get out of here. I hated the peer pressure that I used to put on you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for years and years of that. I mean, it wasn't too bad. I think peer, I think more drinking peer pressure is more annoying than like just a nigga not ready to go because it's like they they did drive. So I don't give a fuck about you drinking. I just want I just me. want you to stay with with me because if something pop off, then you know. I'll be the first thing. I'll walk. I'll walk if I got to something pop off. Yeah, you will. But hopefully, you know what? Now that you mention it, I, I hope. I don't want to say prediction. Fuck it, I'm gonna predict it. I'm gonna have a New Year's kiss next year. All going right, in, now. Going into 2021, going into 2022. You gotta find you some girls first. True. <laughs> True. But I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have me one. I don't know how. Is is. Is nah, what? I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm dying myself. This nigga finna blow up his whole situation. <laughs> Like, nigga, we caught you on 4K. We listened to the podcast. Right. <laughs> but, yeah, I never had one, so I think I want one. So, uh, you know, ladies, you know, DM me, boy. You know what I'm saying? We can make something happen. Maybe, possibly. I got something for you if you want. Yeah, you always no, <laughs> no, this guy get brought up now. This guy get brought up on the park. Tyler always say he gonna throw a nigga a lob, but this nigga yet to throw one lob my way. I gotta get the lobs first. But you got the lobs. Yeah. 
And then you don't throw them. <laughs> so this nigga hit. Nigga be like, bro, when we push you on to that, yeah, she's attractive, bro. Put me on. All right, bro. Don't hear nothing for like weeks. Yeah. And that's all my own merit because I'm trying to see what's going on with them. <laughs> <laughs> if that don't happen, then you, I know who to call. <laughs> and by the way, and by the way, I have a situation like that right now. So you'll be seeing me. You'll be hearing about me. Uh, me? Yeah, you. So what you're saying is you failed with the lie. I said, uh, yeah, I said what I said. <laughs> don't worry about that. Just know that some good blessing is coming your way. Y'all heard it here on the podcast, but we don't know yet until we see. Um, I guess because we... You know what the crazy part about this? Right now, I am holding a coin that's almost like the equivalent of like the size of a like a like a coin like a dollar coin and it's like a ten commandments thing i found this on new year's like on like the street like i was getting gas i pulled into a pump and i just found this on the ground and since then i haven't like stopped thinking about it and i've i've been carrying this this whole entire time Hmm. it's literally a coin with the ten commandments on it And me being growing up in a Christian household, that kind of symbolizes like something for me. I don't know what it is quite yet, but I'll figure it out. Hopefully it's something good. Please, please bless me with some good shit this year. Yeah, but I, I kind of want to go back to the toxic. I don't think we, we don't get jealous because we both kind of talked to some of the same girls before, like... I don't oh, are you saying we're Eskimo brothers? Well... <laughs> what you said is true! <laughs> some of those... You, you knew! I knew? And then you did! I did? Mm-hmm. I knew and I did. Mm-hmm. I don't remember this. There, there's at least two. There, yeah, I, I know for a fact there's at least two. I know, yeah, <laughs> multiple. By the way, multiple times. I, so like, you could look at that like, oh, that's nasty. But you could also look at that like, oh, oh, oh. And then listen, they, we, we never, I don't get jealous. This but. podcast, listen, we don't hide anything on this podcast. Th- these, <laughs> these are pretty much just cultural observations of our everyday life <laughs> that we've been through, whether it's past, present, future. Nothing is off bars here. So, right. And this is a toxic podcast right now. So, so, cause like, I, I'm a firm believer in like, unless I really, this really, it's getting hot. Let me get off. I, I, unless I really, really love the girl off. and like, you know what I'm saying? I was in love with this girl and things happen. I, I would not. I wouldn't want someone to like date her that I was really close with, like Tyler, but Whoa. other than that. Have you ever been in love before? I haven't, but other than that, like. This shit's crazy, man. I, other than that, <laughs> hold on, let me finish this point. I, other than that, I'm, I'm pretty much like, yeah, if y'all niggas gonna be happy, be happy, because like a lot of niggas have definitely done that to me, to where it's like, they mess with someone that I used to talk to, and I'm just like, I don't care, as long as y'all happy, be happy, leave me alone. like. That's really it. Like, See, that was the thing. My problem was if you're messing with them, I feel like I should at least confront you about it. Like if 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 I was messing with them and say you mess with them like afterwards, I feel like you should say something or like I should like say something to you about it. That's just how my mindset was back then because I feel like. But at the end of the day, it's like. Because I don't know where it will go between you guys. And like if. Like, if things go bad, then it's kind of on me. It's like throwing a oop, and if that dude don't catch the oop. Well, but it, at the end of the day, too, it's like you can't play Guardian if you didn't want to be there in the first place. That is true. Uh, the only way I would say... So how would you know that I wouldn't want to be in there in the first place? Because you wouldn't want to be there. If you didn't care about that person, what makes you want to care about that person now? Because I'm talking to you. That's not the fact of the matter is, is that like I did, but obviously I had feelings for her before and those feelings just don't go away. I know, but I'm saying if you were done dealing with this person, it's over. It's finito. What makes it, what, 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 what makes it that I'm done? Like what, 
Like what? Because honestly, yo, done. If I'm talking to the person, I'm not. Not just... necessarily. So you just trying to say what's yours is yours forever. She could be messing with me still on the side. You know? <laughs> toxic. That's 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 me. That's how I used to think. Not now. I'm I'm completely changed man now. Yeah, see, that's different. That's just being toxic. That's that's what I'm saying. But what also what I'm saying too is like, yeah, I mean, if you if y'all really happy, y'all want to move that way. Like, uh, more power to you. It's I, I get what you're saying too, because I'm kind of the same way. Because it's like you just don't want to be blindsided by it. Because as soon as you get blindsided by it, there's no like realistic way. Like I, I was having this argument with uh, uh, a friend of mine. Shout out to Ghost one time. We were having this argument because we were saying this girl in this anime, she dated this guy and there was part of a team. The guy dies seven years later, she ends up messing with someone else on the team. And then Ghost was trying to say, that's foul. And he's like, well, Ghost was trying to say, that's not foul. She moved on and y'all both moved on. You're happy. But we was trying to say, that's foul because that was your man's. And I was like, yeah, she gets to move on. But it's like, you're literally moving on to someone in the team. And the reason why we were saying it was foul, me and Grim, shout out to Grim, we're saying it's foul because it's like, at least in my eyes, unless they brought it to attention, well, obviously they couldn't because the nigga died. But it's harder to... It's harder to move that way. Like somebody has to reach out to somebody. This is how life works. Even if you guys are in a group and you hit it off, somebody has to text somebody, somebody has to set it up, somebody has to kick with somebody, somebody has to fuck somebody. Right. <laughs> like, it, it, like you have to go through that extra mile. So that's why we're like, this is foul because at some point in time, one of y'all had to set this up. And I know I didn't really help my point earlier talking about like, but that's how, that's kind of how I thought. The older I'm getting, I'm like, I understand it now. Cause it's like, shit. Everybody has somebody that dealt with somebody. You feel me? Like, motherfuckers is like step parents and this, that, and the third. So, everybody eventually gonna run to somebody you dealt with in the past. And you don't even know sometimes. Like, realistic, like real shit. But you don't even know. Like, there was one situation where I was trying to talk to this girl and she messed with someone I knew, but I didn't know that they messed with each other because I was like, I never knew that. But you wouldn't know that unless you asked, unless you've seen them together. Because it was one of the bullshit situations you ever been with a female. <laughs> And she said, oh, what's up, such and such? And you're like, oh, you know this nigga. <laughs> I've never seen you niggas interact, like each other's pictures or nothing. How you feel this nigga? Oh, yeah, man, I used to talk. I feel like that's happened between me and you once. Has it? I don't know. <laughs> I was just talking about somebody else, but yeah, there definitely was one time, this was in high school, but I was definitely insecure that a girl I was talking to did that shit like three, four times. And it didn't help that we was at a basketball jamboree, so everybody from all around the schools was there. So I'm like, motherfucker, how, how many niggas you know? <laughs> but that was my insecure days. <laughs> that, that was my insecure days. But yeah, I would honestly say so mess with what you want to mess with. There's there's one for sure. I mean, pretty much all times exes, but like there's one for sure that I would never touch. But that's, that's for a different reason that I'm not going to share on the podcast. I think Tyler might know, but if you don't, I'll tell him afterwards. Um, shit, is there anything else toxic we can talk about? Oh, man. Is there anything toxic on your mind you want to say real quick? Because we got other topics, but this is a juicy conversation, I think. Yeah, it is, and I think we needed this one. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, I don't know. Uh, for Do you have... Do you have a hard time like accepting what is like like if you and your girl or what girl to be like um kind of ended on bad terms and stuff like that and like they completely moved on and like do you feel like God, it's kind of hard to say. Do you feel like that, like, you're obligated to move on at the same time she does? Or, like, do you kind of just go on your own pace about it? It's hard, right? Because I I don't think... It's hard because... And granted, I, everybody moves different in that situation. I mean, everybody it's, feels It's different. hard because... It's a weird situation because I... Pers- Okay, well, to answer that question, I have a question, just real quick. Uh, do you truly believe that, like, 
like is, is someone say you you and somebody else you in a relationship y'all have a good what would you say is a good length for a relationship maybe six months three months like it's a solid relationship but it just doesn't work out six months to a year well is that, was, is that an okay relationship well these last two i was in the relationship yeah, i did not say bring up the last two <laughs> oh. make it awkward on the podcast i'm trying to give you an example well my past were s- <laughs> six months and then like a year so like it's usually half a year for the example that i was trying to give so you don't indict yourself um so say for for example that relationship say at your ex a week later is talking to someone or moves on is that foul play is a foul play um because like basically what i'm trying to say is to your question that you asked how long is it okay for someone to mourn and then move on to someone else? Because I personally feel like I know some people that just literally have like a like literally a one week like span of just being sad and then they go back to you know what their life was before the relationship. Yeah, but and that's what I'm saying. Is like, it, but if they're talking to someone, is that okay? Because like, what I'm saying is, I feel like people move at their own pace and. Realistically, I mean, unless that was like the love of my life, and I like I can't like, unless that was like the love of my life, and I had a kid with this person, I'm gonna try to move on. As, as toxic as it sounds, as, as dick as it sounds, I'm gonna try to move on. Do they have the to be? Week. Do they have to have a kid with you to be the love of your life? I would imagine so. I don't know why you made that face, but me personally, I don't want to have a baby mom. I don't. I, I want to marry the woman that bears my child. But that's what I'm saying, though. Like, dude, does a, does a kid have to be brought into it no, for them to be a love of your life? Kid, but exactly. That's what I'm trying to get at. Like, why does like I want a family with that person? I was getting ready to say because like you're kind of connecting the two. Like, yeah. I've seen people that are in love that have been with their significant other for 12 years, call them love of their life, doesn't that, and have no kids? But maybe that's what they wanted. Exactly. I don't want that. Oh, okay. So you don't want kids? No, I do. Okay. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> if I'm going to be with the love of my life, I want to have kids. I do. And now, depending on the situation, I'm not going to bring the fucking kid into this world. If I don't have a better situation than my parents just had me in, and they had me in a good-ass fucking situation. So I got a lot of work to do, especially being 25 right now. I or think, 26, excuse me. Now that I think about it, I was a pretty much a geriatric child. I think my dad was like... Late thirties. My mom was like late thirties. <laughs> I mean, but yeah. To answer your question, yeah, I'm gonna try to. If if it ain't the one, I'm gonna try to move on that next week. That's crazy, man. It, it, but that's what I'm saying. Is like, I feel like people. I, I feel like especially especially when if you spend that significant amount of time, like that duration. Yeah, but it's like, how long you want me to be sad? You don't need to be sad. You just need to well, just how, take time to heal. But healing is not always being sad. Why do you assume that you have to heal, though? Just because you break up, that don't mean you have to heal, man. It, some, shit, some shit just don't work out. <laughs> that don't mean you was a bad person and you was bad in a relationship. Some shit just doesn't work out. You, like, you'd be two different people going in two different directions. But that also goes back to the longevity of the relationship. But, but you, can, you think every six to one year relationship is bad? No. Or you think it would always? Do you think? Do you think most relationships end on end on the bad note? I think most of relationships end up mutual. To be honest with you. True. And that's why I think that, like, yeah, if it didn't work out with you, I'm gonna try to go on and move to the next thing. But if, don't you think you should reevaluate and you should try to see why it didn't work out? No. You know. What? No. That's crazy. That's that's insane. Like how? Because there's, there's got to be something that triggered that relationship for it to end. Whether it be you, or it be her, it had to be something. So say, so say for example, the girl liked Honey and it didn't work out. Well, I'm not going to, it's not going to work out if she liked Honey and I wanted to get a chick that doesn't like Honey. And I know that's a terrible analogy, but that's literally the first thing that came to my mind. It's like, if it didn't work out because we're two different people and this, that, and the third, then I'm gonna go try to find someone that's different, that fits more my mold, that would work in a relationship. But this is also coming from someone who, I don't think I'm bad at relationships. 
I never really been in one. But that's what I'm saying. Like you haven't had the exper- enough experience to actually like know. But then you know? I don't. But I don't change either. That's what I'm saying. Is like all the relationships I did have worked out. It was just it just stopped. Like we're just two different people doing some own shit. So like I never had a bad relationship. Or a situation shit with a person. It's just we're just two different people. She wanted to go this way, I went that way. And the next thing I did was the next thing I've been doing. <laughs> like, I, I'm a firm believer in like, yeah, like it, it, you only have to reevaluate yourself if you wasn't yourself in a relationship. You only have to fix yourself if you wasn't yourself. But then you're just speaking on terms of you though. It, you act like but that, that's all you have. If that's all you're going off of, if like you break up with a person, I mean that's not working for everybody else though. Like that, you know, and in mutual and stuff like that. I mean, you're just thinking has you're just thinking as if the situation didn't end bad at all, and you guys just split, and then you went off to. But even if it things. ends bad, like you, are you only saying that like you were the reason? Because sometimes it could just be solely like the the other person. And vice versa. True. But I, I, I'm confident in believing that I won't really change that much. I might. No, I don't know about that. I don't Why? Know about that. But how? Because uh, the thing about relationships also that comes into that comes into the fold is that you got to be able to compromise. But there's a difference between compromise and doing some shit you don't want to do. Isn't that pretty much compromising? Like if you're no. if you're doing something for your significant other that you don't want to do, but it's just out of the benefit of them, isn't that compromising? That's doing some shit you don't want to do, though. That's compromising. <laughs> compromising seems like compromising would be like would be like the goal is to eat, right? So say me and you are trying to get some food, right? Say I want tacos and you want pizza. You don't. And then I say, come on, man, let's go get this pizza, let's go get this pizza. They're like, and then I compromise. I don't get the tacos, but I go with you to get the pizza because we still have the same goal. I'm saying if you're... If I, don't want ta- if I don't want pizza at that time, I don't want pizza. But that's what I'm saying. That's compromising. Because you're, but you're, but you still have the same goal. What I'm saying is, if you genuinely don't, but you're do the one that wants pizza, though. I don't want pizza. Like I said, I compromise. How'd you flip? But it, but that's what I'm saying is like we still have the same goal to eat, right? True. So that's a compromise because you're still having the same goal to do something. I'm talking about if you. But it's not it. the exact thing that you're doing though. Like that's not like. It's I'm like one of those things. It's like you're doing the complete opposite of what they want you to do. Like you're just flat out just not going to do it because, you know, you don't want to. If that's not who you are, if if you're. Why does it have to be not who I am? Why can't it just be something for them to benefit them? Why do I? Why, why does that? How is that not a compromise? Because you're going to hang out with like-minded people. Like you, if that's supposed to be your best friend, you're not always going to be in a situation to where you're doing something you don't want to do. That goes with the other. That goes with another fault of you're not always going to agree with each other. Exactly. So then that's, but that's okay. Exactly. So it's okay to do something out of, out of your situation but that you don't want to do. But you're saying that like benefit you, them. you do what That's you what want. I'm saying. But what you're saying is you're doing it more than you are doing stuff you do like together. That's not the case. That's sometimes not always the case. But that's what it makes us. That's what you're making a scene. You're you're acting like it happens more times often than not in relationships. You're making it seem that way. No. Yes. I'm not saying I won't compromise, but I'm saying I'm not going to break character for it. Because I feel like, well, well, that's not breaking character. That's just. But a lot of people do that. A lot of people do that. And who? They, they, uh, they, who have you seen? A lot. Besides me. A lot. Pretty much anyone that I could say in a relationship that's been unhappy before. And I'm not going to put nobody's business out there, but the, a lot. Well, fuck it, a lot. And that's what I'm saying is like. A lot of people try to make their significant other happy, and it almost kills them by doing that. And that's not a good thing. That's why a lot of motherfuckers be unhappy and they end up doing some shit. Because if you ever see someone that's not 
with their significant other doing some shit they like, they're a different person. Yeah. They are a different person. A lot of motherfuckers be generally happy and like generally silly. And I'm not saying that their significant other is bringing them down or something like that, but it's just like, it's just be little shit. It's just like, they all gonna kick it with the boys. Why? Because the boys are <laughs> different than you and like, they're exactly. my friends. Like, yeah. They make me happy. And it's just shit like that. And it's like, because it's like, boom, prime example, prime example. And this is why I'm saying, like, I'm kind of starting on the compromise. And it's not like I'm ignorant, I don't understand where you're coming from. I'm just saying how I live. I got a lot of goals. Like I said, my grandpa died. I got shit I want to achieve. I, I want to stream, I want to YouTube, I want to do this and stuff. Now, can I make time for people? Yeah, absolutely. But it's just like, also, you got to communicate, which communication is fucking key. Because a lot of motherfuckers, that's another reason why compromise doesn't work, because a lot of motherfuckers be lying. Oh, yeah, this is fine, even though they fucking hate it and they don't say it. But I got goals and ambitions that I want to achieve and do. So it's like, I have to make time for certain shit that is important to me. So if it's like, I'm gonna kick it with this person, I wanna make sure it's important and have time for it. But I'm not going to bend and break my back for it. And I feel like a lot of people do that. Wouldn't you agree? So as someone that's been in relationships, wouldn't you say there are some times where you, you were out of character just to do something for the other person? Yeah, but also, I mean, that's just love, you know? That's just love for the other person, I feel like. To me, that's what it is. But that sounds ass. How? Oh, my God. To do something that you don't want to do for the other person. Again, that just goes with compromise, Brian. That sounds trash. Well, that's fuck. Because everything I've done for someone, I wanted to. And I feel like that that's even better because it showcases that. I'm not saying that like, oh, fuck her, I do this. It's just one of those things where like you're going out of your way to do it. So isn't that, oh, fuck, I can't do this? You no. Going out of your way? If it's not what you wanted to do, it's kind of a burden, is it not? No. Because I'm doing it for the love of somebody else. But like, I'm not saying that like I can't be, like, you're saying that it's like, it's complete, like, I'm not happy doing this. Like, I'm just not happy in the situation at all. So why am I doing this? So but then that's the compromise I was talking about earlier, where y'all both had a goal of eating. Like, the, the goal is to hang out. You might not want to do what she's doing, but the goal is to kick it and spend time with your girl, right? Yeah. So then that's the compromise. And that's what I was saying earlier, but you saying that was not the case. With the pizza and taco analogy. Oh yeah, I did say that. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's like, it's okay to compromise if the goal's the same, but I'm saying I'm not gonna bend on my back and do some complete other bullshit. Like, she wanna go skydiving. Bitch, I'm not trying to skydive. I ain't never skydiving in my life. I don't feel like skydiving. Wait, wait, what the fuck do I need to be up in the air for with no parachute? Hey, there's there's <laughs> a 1% chance that I might actually go through and do it. Uh, uh, the 99% chance is like, nah, I'm good. So, and that's what I'm saying is like there's shit like that like not to the extreme but there's a lot of things that people are doing in relationships where it's like that where it's skydiving out of a plane nah, I'm not even lying and that's what I'm saying that's what I have an issue with and that goes back to the thing that we was talking about earlier is like if I, I like if I break up with someone that I loved and I cared about but it's over it's never gonna happen again how long do you want me to wait in in because it's like it's not necessarily just how long are well, well what i mean too what i mean too is like prime example don't you think you will want that for yourself oh prime example prime example another thing that i'm realizing is like i'm not old shit i'm literally not old shit i'm not if i hit a girl up i'm not old in response i'm not old uh, hey what's up depending on the history or whatever we have i'm not old in anything so if that's the case if she's done with me She's not old my time that I have to sit and be by myself. If I want to go out and have a drink with my friends or kick it and socialize and flirt. Which you don't do anyway. Well, I do not as much as I should, <laughs> but well, yeah, I do. It's just, I, I just don't go downtown. But like, yeah, <laughs> if, if I want to do that, I'm allowed to do that, especially a week after the situation. I'm not allowed to be sad. And, I mean, she's not old that. <laughs> Right? She's not old that, but are you old that? Not if I don't want to be. Not if, not if I'm in that situation to where I feel like I need to heal. 
different bodies come for, <laughs> with different situations, dude. Like, but then that also goes to your compromise thing. Is like, like maybe you compromise so much that it fucked you up. Maybe. To the point where you feel like you need to help. Because I, I think, do I think you're a bad person? No. Do I think you're a, a bad boyfriend from the outside looking in? Let me correct that because some of y'all think that was good. <laughs> some of y'all, <laughs> and I love the gay community. I just didn't want to sound crazy. But no, I don't, I don't think you're a bad person at all, Tyler. I, I don't. I think you do have some issues that you're trying to work on, and that's great. But it's just like, I feel like it goes back to that conversation we had off air one of those times it's like nigga do you want to be happy that's really it it's really yeah. it i think if you want to be happy it will showcase in your life in your work life in your in, in the podcast and the relationships you build in the future like literally if you want to be happy it will work it's just do you want it or not right that's really it like <laughs> I, like, the more I learned, I think the lesson of today is you're not old shit. So, you know what I'm saying? If you feel like you can move on, like, relationships do have bad breakups, but I don't think every relationship had two bad people in it. I definitely think there's I think it's like, just like, oh, now that I think about it, I think a lot of the things, I mean, granted, it's not for every relationship, but most of the time, like I said, most relationship in mutual is just because there was just too much misunderstandings I guess throughout the relationship I feel like or there was just like you said more compromising than actual like actually connecting or doing shit together mm -hmm. that both of you actually want to do because mm -hmm. it's like they always say that you should be with your best friend which I definitely tried that philosophy and uh that shit is not working. Sometimes you don't get out of that best friend yeah. thing, so. You see, but that's what I'm saying. It's like, if you're with your best friend, they're, like, they're gonna know, I'm not saying like opposites do attract, but they're gonna know like what kind of mood or what kind of things you like and what you wanna do. And like, I feel like a lot of motherfuckers are just in situations that it makes sense for the time, but they're really two totally different people. Like. Yeah. Which. It's kind of sad because, like, you get into a relationship and you don't really click like you thought you would. Mm hmm Or you're like, and, and we, we haven't even, like, even me and Tyler agree, disagreeing on this. That's just, that's just the schematics of it. Like, that's just the, the technical side of it. There's still, you know, how do the person flirt? How do they act? How do they with people, other people? And, like, how attractive they are? I got to see how you are around your family members. Pretty cool, calm, collected. You know, like around like. Are oh, you talking about that? Okay. Yeah. Around the people that you see every day, I gotta see how you treat them, how you go about them. Well, that's also why I always try to tell like my homegirls and shit, because it's like if that ain't calling his mom, bitch. Right. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> Disrespecting mama. <laughs> no, if he ain't disrespecting his mama, you think he finna treat you like a queen? Shit. He might be able to buy you something, but he finna. Hey, bitch. What? Yeah, it's, I mean, that's crazy. And, like, it's stuff that, like, I didn't even think about even looking into until you said that to me, like, about a couple of years back. Mm hmm. Because it's like, it just depends on who you move and who you care for. And then, uh, so, question Do you feel yeah, like every relationship you have to, like, heal? <laughs> Like something bad has happened and you need to fix it immediately. I feel like that I put myself in a lot of situations that um, that are not I ideal for the relationship that I'm in. So therefore, I feel like I have to try to reconcile it a little bit and make peace with it mm. and be able to fix it any way that I can. Sometimes I haven't been able to fix it every way I can. So when you say fix it, do you just mean like, so when you mean fix it, do you mean like, so y'all just on good terms? Like after the relationship or you mean like still together and with that person? Like just on good terms, you know, just. Do you feel like you're owed that? See, I feel like I'm owed that. Like I, I thought about that a lot of the time, times I felt that way. And now that I'm getting older, I'm starting to see the more relationships that start to fall to the wayside for me. 
I'm starting to see that. Hey, to break it to you, brother, man, you're not old. That that's yeah. And nigga, I'm not even in relationships, and I'm seeing that. Like, we're not old. That and that's crazy. It's crazy because it's like it's sad. You would think you would be for how much time and effort you put into it. But if you, I mean, again, if you are a piece of shit and you treat her like a piece of shit, she finally moves on. And it's all she wrote. <laughs> and like. Bro, I'm noticing that I try not friendships. to look at I, and I try not to look at time like that, but you know. I mean, I, I, I don't either. I don't look at time, but I just look at like how I treat a person, and it's just like, damn. I'm not but, saying that timing time is like shit. Like, I mean, I mean, obviously it's something, but because like <laughs> to put it on a small spectrum, like I know it's like. Like, I vividly remember telling this girl happy birthday and this and the third and like checking up on her, making sure she's good. Just like, you know, you know, you, know, you see someone going through it. Like, all right, like, I'm a friend. I'm her friend. I'm going to do my job as a friend. Make sure she's good. Nigga, my birthday rolled up. She read. She was the first one to view my shit. <laughs> Viewed the story and all. I'm like, oh, it's my birthday. <laughs> Not a happy <laughs> <laughs> birthday. Oh. <laughs> Oh, man, my chest hurts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn, you know I'm done, man. <laughs> this is how we starting all 2021. Like, yo, I'm like, yo, I know I said, like, she sees it. Like, I even have multiple stories. Though. I'm like, I know she sees She sees one of these, damn it. Like, and then I put it on Facebook, too. So, like, I know she sees other people. Yo, happy birthday. <laughs> like, I, I sit there, I was just like, damn. You getting bro. all these happy birthdays. You trying to bypass. Hey, she's like. <laughs> I was like, bro. I was like, I, I was like, I was nice for what? <laughs> Like, I was saying, like, I was, I was getting a, a birthday gift. I was old a birthday wish. This is like, damn, nigga, I can't even get a happy birthday. Right. That's like, yeah, that's the craziest thing. You know, that's you know old shit. Fucking sad, sad world we live in, man. I, the, I've never been in that situation personally, but god damn it, my heart just. We're not old pours, shit, Tyler. man. God it, damn it, man. Yeah, it's, it's hard to say. It's sad. It's damn it. It's, it's sad as hell to think about, but fuck. It's just the times that we live in and the age that we are, too. I feel like. I feel like when you start looking at time and shit like that in the way that I used to, I feel like you gotta be a little bit older for that to actually, like, mean something. So then, what do you put your stock in as far as like, what are your old? Like, what are you old? If, if you don't put time or you don't try to look at time, what do you try to look at? Like the relationship itself or like the friendship? Well, I've always thought that like, like you said, to, we gotta be friends first. We gotta be before we're in a relationship and I'll stand by that too. Mm -hmm. So like, without the relationship, okay, then what? We go back to being friends. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I've, I've always felt like that. I'm at least owed a friendship. I mean, you know, I, I see what you're saying and I, I kind of agree to a certain degree. But even with that, like, I, me personally, and a lot of situations that I've kind of been in, like, the, <laughs> it's going to sound dumb, but hopefully I can make it make sense. Like, I want the girl to like me more than I like them. Or no, actually, nah, I scratch it. <clears throat> I want to like the girl more than she likes me, so I have to put in the effort and have to put in the work and kind of like, like we're to do every day and like you have to make sure you can win her every day type shit. But I've noticed a lot of the like situations and flings and entanglements that I've been in, like the girl is like, for lack of a better term, and I'm, I'm not shit, so I'm not trying to brag or anything like that. But the girl's like obsessed with me. Like I can't do no wrong in her eyes, and then like that kind of fucks up things. Because then I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna just wild the fuck out then <laughs> if I'm perfect. <laughs> Have you ever had a situation like that where a girl just thinks you're just the world, the ground she walks on, or the ground you walk on? I don't think I've ever had a girl that was completely obsessed with me. If mm -hmm. that's what you're trying to say, but or just you can't do no wrong, like. No, because I did wrong before we got in the relationship. <laughs> so, they, <laughs> so they know. <laughs> so, 
So they know how my characteristics are before they get into a relationship with me. I would at least hope that you do. So. <laughs> I mean, we're not all saints, you know, fuck, if I walk into the church right now, you know, hey, I feel that. but, um, yeah, you gotta know what I, you gotta know what somebody is before you even think about the relationship. That's always for me. Like you got feel for, that just goes with the feeling out process, the talking to him process, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So like, I mean. With any new relationship that comes, you know what Tyler Gross already is. You know how I rolled. Hopefully, you will find a better, more um, calmer, more peaceful, <laughs> healthier me. Because it's like, even in my future, like with my future boo type shit. Because I'm trying to get ranked for these, for not only me, but damn it, the people that come around me too. True, I feel that. You know? But like, even for my future boom, like, I might go out, like, once a month. Once a month? But, yeah, I mean, I, I only go out, like, four or five times a year. But, like, if I go out once a month for her, I, I can do that. You know what I'm saying? It's not like she's going to get me go out every weekend. She got me fucked up. She think that. Like, that's kind of crazy. Especially if it's, like, when you do the same shit. Oh, I'm not going out every weekend. No. No, absolutely not. That's completely out of the question. You might as well break up with me. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's the type of shit I'm talking about, man. But... I don't know. We we just kind of rambled. I don't even know if there's a point to this, but there was a point. They found out how we are. <laughs> like damn, this nigga's not damn. shit. But we're not shit in all different ways. That makes us special. I don't even know how the fuck we got here. We're an hour deep, but I did want to talk about the college football playoffs. The roll top roll. Them them niggas smacked. Them niggas smacked. Uh, oh, Notre Dame's Notre Dame's kind of ass. To be honest with you. Ain't you a Notre Dame fan in a way? Don't you like them? Why they why why they can't never compete in the playoffs, right? War Eagle. Oh, oh anyway. I personally what the fuck's that? Uh personally I have Ohio State winning. I think Ohio State re- really good and I think they're gonna be the upset underdogs against Alabama. I think the way that D line looked too could give Alabama some pressure. And I think it's gonna be like a 30, 35 scoring game. It's gonna be a good classic game. I think Justin Fields is gonna go off. That running game of Ohio State looks fierce. The way his arm looked, Justin Fields looked immaculate. Um, Hopefully he is kind of healthy though, because he did take a big shot to the ribs and that shit looked hurt. I don't know if I could heal in like 10 days. I don't know if it's 10 days theoretically, because it's usually on like that Monday. But obviously it can't be this Monday, so it's the next upcoming Monday, uh, which would be <laughs> like the 11th. So hopefully he plays well and they go out. I got the Buckeyes. Uh, we've got in the championship game between Alabama and Ohio State. I'm tired of seeing Alabama. <laughs> I really am. That good, bro. This would be Nick Saban's seventh championship if he gets it. Like. Man, about to have one on each, <laughs> like each finger on each hand. That's the crazy thing, man. Like I, I think who wasn't a Bama, like an Alabama fan at one point in time. I know I was for like a good minute. I mean, and then and then um, I converted to Auburn. Like. You might get stomped out in Alabama just saying that. I'm just being honest with you. You said that in Alabama. Yeah, roll time roll. But I like war eagle now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I mean, to be honest with you, but back in my college playing day, or my, not my college, but my high school playing day, shit, that'd be the only way I'd ever go to Alabama. Go to University of Alabama. That'd be the only way I'd ever want to visit Alabama. Just to be a uh, roll time roll. But, uh, yeah, man, they're good. They're dominant. Uh, so, did you get your stemmy? We got to yeah, talk about the stemmies one time for the one time. Oh, yeah, I got it. It's already gone. Damn, hey, nigga, what you standing on? Rent. Ah, never mind. <laughs> you know how that goes. You know what? You're not wrong, though, because I am about to spend all my, like, I spent 200. I, I spent 200 on, the fuck did I spend 200 on? I spent 200 on Arizona, trying to pay that off this month. 
supported my grandpa trying, trying to handle business like he did. And then I, uh, I spent a hundred on my phone to pay that off. And then I think I'm gonna spend another 200 on the cable bill. But once I do all that, uh, I think, I think I'm gonna just keep out the hundred, honestly. Might invest it, I don't know. I wish we got the 2K, especially how fast we got the six. That would've been real, real nice if we got the 2K podcast. Would've, <laughs> like podcast would've been popping <laughs> if, if we got that. And uh, yeah, bro, I'm laughing at this picture, bro. <laughs> this nigga. Bro, you remember? I still can't believe this man Trump, bro. You remember when Clemson won the national championship, mm-hmm. and he had this man all up in the White House, and they were serving McDonald's, like. <laughs> oh yeah, they. Uh, <laughs> remember that? That was. <laughs> Yeah, that was, that was the thing. <laughs> what? I was like, did this really happen in history? You gotta be shitting me, dog. That, that was that was a that was a moment in time. That was a moment. <laughs> that is crazy to me. Um, is there any documentaries that you are watching or want to recommend to the viewers? Right now, I'm watching. I am on fully heavily on this. Um, it's not a documentary. It's kind of this TV show, like crime show. It's called Twisted Sisters. And it is executively produced by Khloe Kardashian. And um, it's actually really damn good. It's about, it's like true actual stories of a pair of sisters, whether they're like blood related or whatever the case may be. But the theme, the going theme is that they're sisters and they commit these gruesome crimes, these brutal crimes in American history as far as murder goes, rape or anything of that sort, um, that's pretty interesting to me. And I've always been interested in stuff like that. Don't think I'm weird, but yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's actually pretty good. I suggest watching that or just taking a look at whatever you want to do. What about you? Um, It's on Hulu, by the way. Honestly, I just, I, I just, I just need another uh, Dark Side of the Ring season three. Where you at? Like, I need something like that. If you got anything like that, like that aesthetic, to like yeah, like I'm trying to figure documentaries out documentaries and it into one. I'm trying to figure out how many fucked up wrestling stories that there are. Like to that. where they could like have a full season. Because I knew that they were on full season one and the full season two, but like, damn, like how many other? Like, like that shit, that shit is good. And I, I like that a lot. Uh, that's my lane. Like how many times can you blur the line against fiction and reality in a wrestling ring? That's the thing that I need to know. That's the thing that astounds me. That's yes. the thing that they need to figure out for themselves so we can enjoy a season three. That's because niggas be wildin', niggas be wildin', 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 wildin'. Um, I suggest you watch Dark Side of the Ring, even if you're not a fan of wrestling. You exactly. can just, you could just see how like the aspect of like professional wrestling goes, as far as it being outside of the ring, inside. You know. Everybody says that, like, everybody has this, like, opinion, oh, it's fake and stuff like that. No, the shit <laughs> that happened in this, yeah, has scripted as it may be sometimes, the shit that comes across at different moments in time in wrestling are actually real. Like, we've seen the motherfucker, like, we we watched one where a motherfucker got stabbed right before he was about to go <laughs> go watch a wrestling match. But hey, bro, you gonna come meet? Yeah, yeah, let's talk about He that. was about to set up, got his ring gear on and everything, about to go do a wrestling match. And then they're like, hey, bro, let me talk to you for a minute. <laughs> slice, slice, slice. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the stuff that we watch. Cause we're, cause we were avid wrestling fans too. So I mean, I still am. I still am, kinda. But yeah, uh, um, 
Anything you want to say to the people to close out this episode? God bless you all for making it through this hellacious 2020 and being able to gear yourselves up for even more fucked up 2021. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're, hopefully 2021 gives you nothing but peace, love, prosperity, blessings, um, knowledge, self-worth, mental health, and all the above. And if you ever, ever need any advice about how to cope, just come to your boy, DM me at TTL underscore O2 on Instagram or Twitter. Or if you have my number, just shoot me a text. Fuck it, man. I'm, I'm willing to talk to any and everybody that needs, you know, a little loving in their life. Um... Please reach out for help. If, you, if you're battling with mental health, please reach out for help. Do not try to do this shit on your own. I, I can't reiterate that enough. Yeah, I mean, talk to someone when you can. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know how this episode going to sound, so hopefully it don't sound like shit. Uh, we finally got both mics to able, be able to work, so it's a good sign. Still don't really know how to use GarageBand. I don't think I want to use GarageBand as the main source, but if I buy this mixer, we can use the mixer and solely do it all on the mixer. But then we got buy new mics. That's going to cost $1,000, so... Please, even if you can't support the podcast financially, your likes, your retweets, your shares, your follows, they all matter. They really do. Please. So hopefully this doesn't sound too bad to you guys. Hopefully you do enjoy this episode. I do apologize if it does come off as shit and it sounds terrible. Why? Me so sorry. Me so sorry. But until next time. Bye.